Transistors are at the heart of every single product that is being discussed on this channel. Over the past decades, they have evolved from simple planar designs to modern 3D structures, so-called FinFETs, and progress hasn't stopped. Intel just announced their next-gen ribbon-fed transistors. But every once in a while something completely new comes along, something that has the potential to change semiconductors forever. And what IBM, in cooperation with Samsung, just announced is definitely a game-changer. Vertical Transport Field Effect Transistors, or VTFET in short. In this video, we will take a quick look at previous developments in transistor technology and then talk about how VTFET has the potential for huge improvements in performance and energy efficiency. Up until about 2012, planar transistors were the norm. This is the classic design, with source and train being separated by the gate on a single plane. The big issue here was that the gate is just sitting on top of the electron channel that forms between source and gate. When you remove the current from the gate, the channel should, in theory, stop transporting electrons. But with modern semiconductors built on small process nodes, leakage becomes a big problem. Because of the small distance and the gate only affecting the top of the channel, electrons still flow even when the gate is turned off. The next big step was the 3D transistor, also called FinFET. Fin isn't short for anything here, it just means the transistor is shaped like a fin. With FinFET transistors, source, train and gate are built as elevated 3D structures. This means the gate can wrap around the electron channel that forms between the source and gate from three sides instead of just one. It's a tri-gate transistor. As a result, leakage is greatly reduced because the gate has more control over the flow of the electrons. Intel's recently announced ribbon fat design goes another step further by stacking multiple electron channels into a single gate. As a result, the gate now wraps around all the sides of the channel, allowing for even more control. On top of that, it further reduces the footprint of the transistor. But there's one thing all of these different kinds of field effect transistors have in common, no matter if planar, fin fat or ribbon fat. The flow of the electrons is happening on a horizontal plane, from one side of the chip to the other, from left to right, and this is about to change. Enter the Vertical Transport Field Effect Transistor, which quite literally turns everything on its head, because this new type of transistor switches to a vertical alignment. VTFETs are designed in a way that the current isn't flowing on a horizontal space, basically from left to right, but from the bottom to the top. They also exist as 3D structures on the silicon base, just like FinFETs, but their floor plan has been completely redesigned. Now the gate sits in between source and train like a sandwich. This has many different advantages, but the most obvious is space constraint. If you are building transistors on a planar space, no matter if the gates are built using 3D structures like FinFET, there's always another transistor right next in line. Current flows through the transistors, so every transistor sits in line, much like a string of pearls. Now, these transistors have to be separated, so they won't interfere with each other. For this reason, so-called dummy isolation gates are built between each of those transistors, which of course takes away more space. On top of that, smaller transistors are realized by shrinking the gate size. Modern process nodes have a gate pitch of less than 45 nanometers, and the smaller the gate, the less influence it can exert over the flow of the electrons, resulting in higher leakage. Basically, the planar approach to transistors is fighting against the ever-decreasing size of the transistor itself. The smaller they become, the more current and leakage issues are pronounced. With VTFETs, this issue is completely circumvented. The transistors are now routed from the bottom to top, so their current flow doesn't interfere with each other. You don't need dummy isolation gates between the transistors anymore, and the length of source, train and gate isn't impacting the transistor density, because you're building up and not to the side, meaning you can produce semiconductors that are densely packed but still have large source and train contacts in combination with a increased gate length. All of these changes help to improve the electrical properties. With larger source and train size, you can increase current flow, and with longer gates, you can more effectively shut off any unwanted leakages as the gate has more control over the flow of the electrons. If you are asking yourself now, what does this mean for products these new transistors might be used for in the future, like CPUs and GPUs? The answer is pretty simple. Increased current and current control can improve the switching speeds of the transistor, what we know as megahertz and gigahertz. And better leakage reduction reduces power consumption. IBM claims they achieved almost twice the performance or up to 85% reduction in energy consumption. 
This shows how much of an impact a new transit design alone can have. It could enable mobile devices with a battery life of many days or even weeks, or allow high-speed CPUs to finally break through the 5 GHz barrier and offer much higher clock speeds at similar power levels of today's CPUs. The only question left is, when will we see this tech in action? The good news first. This isn't just a theoretical discovery by IBM and their production partner Samsung. They have actually already produced test chips with VTFAT transistors. The silicon wafer on the thumbnail of this video is actually a VTFAT design. On top of that, the stated 2x performance increase or 85% efficiency boost aren't just wild guesses. They are simulation results based on their first experience with this new tech. That also means it might turn out to be even better in the future. The bad news is that such a radical change in transistor design takes a lot of time to translate from a test production to actual full-scale volume. Semiconductors have a really long production process to begin with. Even the design can take years and the designs are usually tailored to a specific production node. So even if this would be available right now, it would take a lot of time to create the proper tools so chip designers like Nvidia, AMD or Intel could start designing new chips based on a VTFAT process, which then takes a lot more time to get to a tape out. But it isn't ready right now. The research is still ongoing. Yes, it has left the theoretical space and first actual test chips are being produced, but I think we are looking at the late 2020s at best. I still think a new technology like this is really fascinating and I'm sure all we have to do is blink twice and it will become reality. As always, if you found this video interesting, please give it a like, subscribe for more content and see you next time.